name is Alan Stewart. I'm the Spring Roo project lead. Today is a big day for us in the Spring Roo team. We're actually releasing 1.2 today, um, a bit later on today, and um, yeah, we were quite excited about that. Today I'd like to take you through our new features for 1.2. What I've got to show you this morning is our major features, which are being voted for in our Jira site, and our major feature, which is our most popular one, is multi-module Maven projects. This one has many votes. People have been wanting this for quite some time, so we've been able to, be able to show you that this morning. Also, uh, another popular feature, JSF Prime Faces add-on, um, as well as our services DAO repositories layering feature. And another significant feature which people have been asking for is database reverse engineering multi-schema support, where you can reverse engineer tables in more than one schema. Um, particularly useful if you're running databases like Oracle, Postgres, etc. And uh, touch on a few other little things a bit later as well. And as Amy said, there'll be time for questions at the end. So let me just jump right into our major feature for this release, which is multi-module Maven projects. This, uh, in the past, in the RU 1.1 series, you were only able to create single module projects, whereas, as you know, we realize that in enterprise, large enterprises, you want to, you know, most people would create Maven projects with several modules. Uh, for example, like a core module, which might have your domain model. You might have one or more web modules, as well as support modules, you know, and modules shared across different projects. And so we've addressed this in uh, in this release, and we are now able you to, with some new Roo shell commands, to be able to create as many modules as you want, as well as specifying a parent POM, and to be able to, you know, uh, scaffold Web MVC and JSF uh, applications in their respective modules, and uh, all refer to the core domain module. So let's, I'm going to jump into a demo so I can just show you how this works. All right. So start off with an empty directory. And I'll fire up the Roo shell. Right, so we're starting off with a brand new project. So the first thing we can do is use the project command. And I'll just call it com.multi. Um, so now that we've got a parent directory. In fact, um, what I will do instead of that is to actually specify this directory as a parent module. So let me just clean that again. Go back in. Because I'm going to make my root directory a parent module. So project com dot dot multi and there's another dash dash option called um, packaging. And tab again, and you'll see the options are bundle, jar, pom, and wall. We'll select pom. So basically, all, all this has done is created a, you a parent pom in the root directory of your project. So now we can go about creating modules for this project. So we type in the module command, and there's a module create and we'll call it, say, core. If there's any other options to do, which there isn't. Uh, sorry, module name, let me just tab that. Core, top level package, and this can be dot domain, say. Great, so you can see here in the shell that a new directory underneath your, your um, parent project directory has been created called core. It's created a POM and an application context file. Now, we're, you can see also in the in the shell that this is, has the focus on the core module. We can uh, continue to uh, do root commands here, or we can actually go back out up to the parent again. So module focus, and we can say, well, we, we want to go back to the parent. So we're, you can see that the root prompt here has gone back to um, the parent directory. So at this point, I can now create a um, another module. And let's say, call it UI. 
with a top level package of web. Right, so this, uh, once again, this has created a directory called UI, a POM application context. Let's create some entities in our core module. So we can see that we can uh, tab and see all the modules for that, for this project so far. Tab to that. Now at this point, I can then execute the JPA setup command. Uh, provider database, uh, provider, database. And what this has done, as, as you've probably seen in previous releases, is just created a JPA uh, configuration, added the dependencies to the POM of your core module. We can now create an entity. Let's, um, let's call this, let's say, product, for example. And um, you can see in the shell here that it's created um, the, the product.java file and all the aspect.j ITDs to support that entity. Uh, notice that it's also created inside our um, core module as well. So add a, we can add a field. String field. Um, name. We can add another. Field um, string description. Oops, sorry. Okay, so um, we have now an entity called product with two fields in it. We can now focus back to the court to the web module, um, if we like, to actually uh, scaffold a web interface for that. Let's do that. Module focus tab, and we can go UI. And here we now can um, scaffold a web app. So we can do web MVC setup, uh, and now web. So we've got a web configuration now. We just want to um, uh, provide scaffolding for that product entity. Web NPC all. In fact, let me use scaffold, and then I can show you um, that we can actually pick different classes from uh, whatever module we want, actually. So we can do core. And then tab again, and you'll see that we have um, our domain package with our product entity in here. So main dot. Ah, I'm sorry. Let me just go back. Sorry, the class is actually the product controller. Apologize for that. And I want to do the backing type, which now I know to be um, core domain. Okay, so um, we have a um, scaffolded uh, product entity now, so we can quit the shell and then um, load up Tomcat just to show what this looks like in the browser. So the web app has started. So it's, uh, UI. Uh, yeah. So there's our um, product page, just as you've seen before with uh, MVC, uh, RU MVC apps. Um, 
you can operate it as normal. So, so that's that's uh, an example of our multi-module Maven project support. I can also um, clean all that and show you a, a script which comes with the Roo distribution for 1.2. So let's load up that shell again. It's just a somewhat more complicated script. So we just load this up. Script multi-module. I'll just, this is finished, I'll just go through briefly what it's done. Right, so the script is finished, so let's go back up the top from where I typed it. Um, so in this script, we, we are creating a, another a module called Core, a top-level package of Pet, Pet Clinic. Uh, we're, we've, um, we had the focus on Core here, so then we set up JPA within this, in this module. Um, we've started to create some enums here uh, and some entities. This is this is basically the pet clinics script which you've probably run inside Rude before. Um, but we, you know, we've for this for multi-module we've separated the um, the domain classes from the um, um, generated web classes. So um, going down, we can see that we have all the same classes we've created for pet clinic and. Um, Added finders. Now at this point here, we've um, focusing back on uh, the root module, and now we're creating a module called um, UI. And um, we're now um, uh, we also create a module underneath UI called MVC. So you can nest as many modules as you want. Um, and so, for example, if you wanted to make another module under UI called JSF or something like that, or GWT, uh, you're free to do so there. We give you the flexibility for that. Um, so in this case here, we've created a module under under UI called MVC, um, and then we've basically scaffolded, um, um, we've set up Web MVC in here, and um, We've um, updated, well, we have a pet control for some reason. There's a null string in there. I'm not sure what that is. But, um, but this, when you fire up the web app for this particular uh, application, you just get pet clinic as, as per normal. Um, but with all your um, web applications, all your web scaffold, web scaffold of web files inside a different module than what, um, what pet clinic from the 1.1 series would do. So, if I can um, just sum up the multi-module uh, features, we there are some um, conditions we put on um, for creating various artifacts in modules. For example, we we don't allow at the moment MVC and JSF apps to run in the same module um, because of the, um, their you know, um, well, we're not supporting that at the moment because of some incompatibilities there. So, but it doesn't stop you creating another module, say, to run a JSF app as well as an MVC app. Um, we also, um, if you're creating a JPA um, module, um, we, we don't prohibit you from putting web artifacts into that module like, like we've done with 1.1, the 1.1 series, but um, we probably would encourage that. We would, you know, if you're if you're creating a multi-module project, we would ask, you know, we, we we would think that you would have um, your domain model in one module and potentially your UI your um, UI code in another module. But as I said, we don't the 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 Roo shell won't stop you creating, uh, or won't stop you from scaffolding an MVC up inside your domain module. That's uh, that's up to you. The next one I want to show you, just some things about multi-module Maven. Specify a parent POM, which I think I showed you. We'll create modules with the module create command, and you can move around different modules with the module focus command. The next uh, feature I'd like to show you this, um, today is the JSF Prime Faces add-on. This is, as I said earlier, a very well-voted-for feature. 
we've taken a somewhat different approach to this add-on as we've done for MVC. The initial support that we offer for JSF Prime Faces is where we, we actually generate the UI using the APIs of both JSF and Prime Faces component library. Uh, just a bit of background, we chose Prime Faces because it's a really excellent JSF component library. Very easy to configure, in the, comes in a single download. It has many, many components such as auto completion, usual calendar widgets, it has drag and drop components and it forms really well we found and um, so that's, uh, these are some of the reasons why we chose Prime Faces and also it's got a large user, user community, very active. I in fact actually I've been liaising with the head of Prime Faces at Chaitay Saviki with this and he's been helping us out as well, developing this add-on. But just, just on the way, way we generate the UI, we've generated the UI basically using the APIs of both you know, the JSF implementation and Prime Faces. We found, we found this to be, the main reason why we've done it this way is purely for performance. We, we find with um, really large projects in Roo, the shell tends to slow down a bit if you have many, many entities in an MVC application. We're talking large amounts of entities, you know, three or four hundred plus, and also we're able to easily generate code inside Aspect J ITDs rather than continually parse XML, you know, to maintain the interface. I'm not saying we won't offer, a, you know, a choice in the future for this, but, you know, for the initial support, we provide fairly simple um, XHTML um, templates and these, the, the components inside, the, the tags inside those templates, you know, will bind and refer to the controls inside the, the managed beans that we generate. And that enables us to round trip the UI very, very easily and very quickly. So if you were added another field or remove fields, for example, your UI is instantly updated. So let's do an example of that one. So I'll load another project, new project. Create a new project. Let's call it um, Mike Shop. So I have a new project. I'm just going to create and use a single module, a single project module for this demo. Let's set up JPA again. Let's add an entity. Dot um, supplier, say. So let's add a field. So a date field. Field name. Um, what do we call the date? We'll just call it start date or something. Type java.util.date. Uh, a num field. Quantity. And long. And that'll do for now. I'll show you another um, one of our distribution scripts as well, just after this. Okay, so now we can set up JSF. Um, now there's a couple of this. If you just type uh, WebJSF Setup Presenter, you, you get um, the default theme, um, and you also get uh, a default um, JSF implementation, which is the um, Oracle Mahara. If you want to sh see the options, we have um, implementation, and here we have Oracle Mahara or Apache MyFaces. We can just go Oracle. The library at the moment just has uh, Prime Faces, of course, and if you want to change the theme, 
from our default, and you can do this at any time, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, I'm support. We're supporting all the um, Prime Faces themes um, that they offer. So um, our default one is. Well, let's leave that off for now. Okay, so it's copied over some um, some templates. Let's now scaffold it all. Web SF all. I'll put that in the web project. And as you see, we've got um, some uh, artifacts being created, um, some internationalization uh, files here. Um, we have our supplier bean, which is the managed uh, JSF managed bean. Um, a converter uh, is created, um, which is a, a JSF converter, which um, um, converts um, between uh, objects on the web to to um, the supplier entity itself. Uh, an application bean, which has uh, menu information in it. Uh, and a few other things um, here, uh, and all the ITDs associated with that. Now at this point, I can add another field um, to um, to supplier, and and just to show you that it um, updates field name um, description class, and this is where we're going to put. Class of supplier. So you can see here the supplier.java file is updated. It's added the field called description and also the managed bean uh, ITD is also changed because that's added that field to the UI. So let's clear out the shell and then uh, fire up the web app. Jetty. So here's the uh, generated um, JSF Prime Faces web app. Um, we can create a supplier. Uh, because I've added a date field, it automatically uses the uh, Prime Faces calendar widget. So I can select a new date. Uh, I added a uh, remember I added a field, uh, a number field called quantity. So there's a, um, a spinner control added here and another. Um, string field description. Save that, and um, and there's the the saved entity. And you can once you list all, you can edit edit the entity. You can of course delete it if you wish. Um, you can simply view the entity. Um, with these dialog windows, they can be um, resized as well. Um, there is internationalization provided. It's not yet complete. I've got to, um, a few little things to uh, work on there, but um, um, it, that'll be take, taken care of shortly. So if we wanted to change the, um, say, the JSF theme for that, let's we can jump back into the shell. Web JSF setup again. As I said, you can, execute, you can run this command at any time. Minus my theme. And so if we pick, say, eggplant, what that does is it's added um, the prime faces uh, dependency to your POM and updated the web.xml file. So now we can go back to um, Jetty and Run the web app again. Okay, so when we refresh, we have the different color of the eggplant theme. 
vanilla deal. Um, said you can all 30 plus themes, I believe. Um, uh, we just provide directly from Prime Faces for you to use. Haven't yet put a, a theme switcher on the page. Um, I, I, considering that, but I, I don't know how much value it would be to users. I mean, the, the, you could always remove that if you didn't like it, but um, I, I find it a bit of a, um, that's not that useful. I suppose you, how often would you change the color of your, your web apps every day? But yeah, I mean, if people want that, please put a Jira ticket in and we can, I can definitely add it. Just on another sample, which is part of Roo, I'll run that now. It's actually called Bike Shop. This is for creating two entities, a product and supplier. It's adding a few different controls, more controls than you've seen before. This, um, uh, we've created um, an enum called Product Type. So let's once again fire up the web app. Okay. So we've got two, two uh, as I said, two entities, product and supplier. Let's create a supplier first. Um, test. This is using a text box control from um, Prime Faces. Uh, this is because uh, I, I sp in the script it specified that the field length was greater than a certain amount, I think 30, so that it applied a text box control. Um, more text, supplier number, exception date. Uh, you can see here that it's using the calendar widget once again, but um, because there's a, um, a, 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 a a JSR 303 um, annotation on that field. Um, it only allows um, dates from the past to go in, so you're not able to select anything from the future here. And an email address. I'll save that. So we go into a product now. Let's type in a product. Now my with my resolution that you're seeing here, it's quite low. Oh, okay, that's not too bad. Um, this is a this is a, an enum, and this has now created a, um, a drop-down auto suggestion box. So, for example, if I, I can select breaks here, or I can just start typing in F, and I get the the two um, words beginning with F, frame or fork. For example, I can just type saddle, and you've got saddle, seat, post, and stem. So I can select one of those. Um, put in a weight. And there's another another type of field which we're supporting now, um, a file upload field. You can annotate a, a field with a, a new room annotation, which will cause a, well, if you type in the field, um, command, which I can, I'll show you in a minute. Um, the 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 a byte array field is created and it's annotated with this particular field, and also you specify the content type, the MIME type, um, so uh, you know to tell Roo how to actually store that field. So if it um, the JSF add-on will detect that you have this annotated field and create a Prime Faces upload control for you. So this particular field I've created only, only accepts um, uh, JPEGs, and once again, as I said, this is using the, the Prime Faces uh, file upload control. Now that 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 JPEG was uh, it would now be saved into the database as a byte array and as a, um, a lob. Uh, the, the field is annotated with um, at lob as well. Uh, the final box here is the supplier box, which you um, must pick all these um, asterisks here to denote mandatory fields, and we can save that off. Uh, once again, you can edit ed um, edit that, um, change um, 
field as you require. And um, yes, that, uh, that's the, the new JSF add-on. Um, we there's many things we're going to do with the add-on um, in the future. As I, I mentioned before, we want to um, give the option for people to, to use um, XHTML files directly, so that we you know we end up parsing those files rather than using the uh, Java API. And there's uh, many other controls that we can use as well from Prime Faces. We're waiting on the release of Prime Faces 3.0 uh, for the Ruby 1.20 release. We're going to have to be uh, we're going to be using the RC2. Uh, snapshot release as of today. There's a couple of bugs which um, Prime Faces have fixed to help us out. Prime Faces 3.0 GA will be released in the next uh, before the end of the year, I believe, and uh, we'll update our support for Prime Prime Faces in our 121 release in January. I'm going to move on. Um, the next feature I wanted the next to show feature you I wanted was, to show uh, you was um, layering repositories. We've um, up until now that you realise that we've uh, Ru 11 series has always used the active record pattern style where all the CRUD methods are actually um, put into your entities themselves. We wanted to give flexibility where that you can use you know, in large projects to use uh, services, DAOs, repositories. And so with this feature in 1.2, we have now two new commands called the service command and the repository command, which allows you to create a service and an um, implementation for that service as well as a repository, a JPA, and also for Mongo as well. The repository, once you run the repository JPA command, it delegates to Spring Data JPA. So if you want to create an entity and you don't want it to be active record, but you want to provide the assistance capability, then you would create, you can create a service and a repository for that. You can also create a service to sit on top of that as well. If you were to create an entity and a service by itself with no repository, it would still use active record. So the service methods would call the active record methods. If you added a repository, then it would then delegate to the repository methods. That's the way the layering works. So I might just run the pizza shop example directly. I can show you what it does at the end. Oops, I haven't spelled pizza shop properly. Okay, so let's just go let's go back up the top where we ran the script. Okay, we've just created a, 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 just a normal single module project for now. Um, JPA, JPA setup. Um, we've created um, entities, but here on the entity JPA command, which is uh, a sort of a new command for 1.2. Previously, this used to be called entity, but we had to distinguish that between entity JPA and entity Mongo. That's why we had to rename this command. There's a new option called minus dash dash active record. And if you were, if you did not supply this option, you would get active record in that entity by default, as as you've done in the past. But by specifying false, it puts a new annotation um, on your uh, entity .java file called ru jpa entity, and that that tells ru that you don't want active record CRUD methods in that entity. All it does is create the at ID, you know the at ID at version and uh, the entity annotation into the ITDs. And you can see this, this ITD here, the root JPA entity, has those um, um, artifacts. Now I can quickly just jump into Eclipse and show you show you that. Well, this, this, this is an example of, uh, in the bike shop example before, um, this in fact has root JPA active record. So this, this is, this is the new annotation which replaces at Roo entity for this release. At Roo JPA record triggers two annotations or two ITDs to be created, and that is the Roo JPA entity. And as I said, you can see here that you have uh, your standard ID, ID field and version field as well as your entity annotation introduced. In addition, because this, this supplier 
is our active record class. In here, the um, CRUD methods that uh, you've had before in RU115 um, are still there. So basically, if you if you annotated your um, class of JPA active record, you're getting two ITDs, which is essentially a you know, uh, um, when combined is the same as the RU entity ITD that you've been used to. Has just been split up into two. Now, if I was to um, let me just create. Actually, I won't do that. But in this case here, we're not. We don't have the root JPA active record ITD created because we've only we've specified active record false, and because we're going to delegate further down, we're going to delegate and create a repository uh, to handle that. So it's creating um, base topping pizza entities and adding some fields to it. Now this is where we define our repository. Uh, in this, there is a service layer down, uh, down further, but let's uh, let's have a look at this command: repository JPA. So it takes dash uh, dash dash interface and you give it a name and the entity if that's not in focus. You type that in here. So the topping repository, and we'll provide all the persistence methods for the topping domain object. You can also create a service on top of that. And so the service command is used here: service dash dash interface, topping service, and once again the entity is topping. Uh, we've got some JSON things happening there: an MVC, an MVC front end, and the script finishes down here. Now let me just, I might be able to show you what these ITDs look like. Maybe you can see this uh, main Java. So we've separated out, and you're not obligated to do so in any way. You can put your repository classes anywhere you want. But, so let's go to topping repository. It's just a, an interface created with at root JPA repository with the domain type of topping. And if you can cite the ITD for that, it's pretty much delegating to Spring Data JPA classes for actually uh, persisting the data. Uh, inside the service package, topping service, there's an at, a new at root service annotation taking in, and you can you can have several domain types in here if you want to um, aggregate, you know, um, domain objects inside uh, a single service. That's uh, we provide the flexibility for that. Now, because we, we have a repository in this project, the service interf the service impl will use all the um, Spring Data JPA methods. If we didn't have a repository, you would simply see active record calls in here. So you would have topping dot persist, for example. But because we've added a repository, it automatically uses or delegates to the repository methods instead of the active record methods. Now I can quickly show you the web app, but it's Started. Oops, sorry. Pizza shop. And there's the pizza shop app. We can create a new topping. Call it um, cheese. New base. Thick crust. New pizza, and that's where we can. I won't give it price, topping, thick price, save. Nothing new here, really. Anyway, I won't, I won't continue. This is basically just creating the order for that. So, with with the repository and services now that you you have complete control over the way you, uh, your domain objects are generated. As I said, you're no longer required to have active record anymore, which is um, quite, you know, probably desirable in a lot of projects. Um, 
and you can aggregate entities also into the service interfaces as well. Right, just quickly, I've got one more feature to show. DBRE multi schema support. This won't take too long. Current support in 1.1, up in the 1.1x series, is you can reverse engineer a tables from single schema. We now allow you to select as many schemas as you want. So you might have tables with foreign key relationships to other tables and different schemas. Of course, this, this is for databases which do support multiple schemas like Postgres and um, Oracle. Ones which don't, um, you, you, know, you won't see those schemas when you tab complete them. So I'll just quickly run through this command and I'll show you the demo. Go back. The database reverse engineer command, when you uh, do the dash dash schema, you can then type in um, as many schema names as you want. And, uh, and then it will then scaffold, well, create, reverse engineer that tables. Um, by default, if you have multiple schemas, it will create entities into packages with the schema name. So for example, in this case, if you're using more than uh, one schema, it will create a package called schema1 and put the entities into that schema and it will also create a package called schema2 which will put um, the, the entities from generated from the tables in schema2. I'll just quickly show you that. All right, let's bring up the shell again. .dbre JPA setup database uh, provider first hibernate database I'll put in Postgres I have to put in the user ID for this particular database that's spring one my size password through rocks. Now let's see what happens here. So let's see if we can introspect the database first. And you'll see here that we have, when I've tabbed after the schema here, it shows you the schemas in that Postgres database. And these are the two in particular we want to reverse engineer. So a schema one, schema two. Nice one is package, I'm going to put it in a, oh, sorry, in a database introspect, there's no package command. So uh, it's just showing you the, the, the two tables, this is a XML represent, representation of that. Let's reverse engineer it. I'll just, oops, sorry. I'll just put it in the full package for now. So there was only, um, if I show you the Postgres database here, we have schema one, and it's got one table called bike, uh, bike ID, description, supplier ID. And in schema two, we have um, uh, a table called supplier, a primary key, sub ID, name, and phone. There's also constraints, a, for, a foreign key constraint from bike to supplier. Uh, and when you look at the output here, it's uh, created the supplier entity in schema two and the bike entity in schema one. And it's also created a foreign key relationship between bike and supplier, uh, many, like a one to many field, I think, in this particular example. So if, if you didn't want to, if you were, you know, DBRE, of course, if you add another field, uh, the same as before, I'll just add quickly another field here, test. type of um, char. So I've got a new field, test in uh, table bike, and I can reverse engineer that again, and um, the DBR XML file is updated, it's added the field, it's also added, um, it's changed the um, DB managed ITD and added that field. I mean, I can introspect that and show you. If you look inside bike here, there's your Field called test. 
So that's quite simple, really. That's all it does. It doesn't limit you to how many uh, uh, schemas you can reverse engineer. Bear in mind, if you do have foreign key relationships from tables in one schema to tables in another schema and you don't provide one of those schemas in the command, you would get errors for sure because it's trying to um, create a relationship to a non-existent entity. So you need to, if you do have um, relationships across schemas, you do need to provide all the schemas required in the command. So just quickly, other features for RU 1.2, it's Apache 2 license now, I've mentioned that in a previous blog. We do offer Mongo support, integrating with Spring Data Mongo, there's a new entity Mongo and repository Mongo commands. At the moment, we don't offer cross-store uh, persistence, so you can't have JPA and Mongo in the same module or, or same single project if you're just running with a single project. There's a Jira ticket to that, you know, to enhance that down the track. The shell runs much, much quicker than the 1.1 1 .1 series. Particularly with large projects, you'll notice that if you have uh, a large MVC app, the shell is fairly sluggish back in the 1.1 1 .1 series, but now it runs quite a bit better. Just some small usability enhancements. The JLine, which is a shell software which drives our shell, that's been updated so that you can use backspaces now and that works across multiple lines, which is uh, quite a useful feature. And there's some colorings, as you've probably seen in the shell uh, along the way. At this point, we have, I just want to direct you to just uh, some links. Um, you're probably all aware of this. Our homepage is at uh, www.springframework.org slash ru, the forum, um, forum at springsource.org, and our Jira is where you can log feature requests and uh, bugs, and um, we're also on Twitter, at springru. So thank you very much. Uh, I think at this point we'll try to answer some questions. Question that says, how do you manage plugin dependency management now? I'm not quite sure of the context of that. We do have a dependency add command, if that's what you're talking about within the shell. Otherwise, we, uh, if you're talking about multi-module, then we, the dependencies are added to that module as they're required. Another question here, uh, if you want to add a DAO, we, we just support repositories at the moment. I mean, a repository and a DAO have sometimes been interchangeable terms, but if you, in our system, you know, the closest thing to a DAO is, is a repository. So you would use a repository JPA command for that or repository Mongo. Any news on the GWT integration? It does not use the latest version, does it? Well, it uses 2.4, and I'm pretty sure that's close to, it's either the latest version or it wouldn't be far off it. Ah, good question. First, do you support finders using the service repository approach? It's not going to be in 1.2. We're hoping to have it in 1.2.1 or 1.2.2. So at the moment, all the finders do delegate back to Active Record, but we will be adding that feature. And that's actually one of the subtasks of the Jira ticket RU 1.2.0. If you want to follow the subtasks of that ticket, that's one of the things which we will be addressing fairly soon. How do we do Spring integration with RU? Well, we don't provide out of the out of the box support with RU itself, but you. You can certainly modify the application context out of the dependencies to your projects yourselves. We're just sort of out of scope for us at the moment. Any other questions? No other questions? Okay. Well, thank you, uh, everybody, for attending.